Great. Thank you so much, Aaron. And yes, I will 100% be diving into my experiences at DriveWorks because it's a really cool thing that I was able to do. And it's something that I think has helped me a lot in my current role with what I do at Inflow Technology. Uh, and, and one of the things that I do at Inflow Technology is that I am a PLM application engineer and I specialize in DriveWorks. It's the tool that I'm probably most comfortable in out of all of the ones that we support at Inflow. It's something that I absolutely love. And one of the things that uh, probably the thing that I love the most about DriveWorks is that no matter what you do, whether it's DriveWorks Express, which if you missed it, Derek Lawson presented on that last week, or, uh, it's on our YouTube, pam our YouTube page right now. So definitely check that out uh, if you didn't see it. And I love talking about DriveWorks Solo because I think we can use that to save a lot of time and money, as I'll show you today. And even DriveWorks Professional and kind of walking through all three of those phases and how we can use them. But specifically today, I'm going to talk about how you can use driver solo to save you a boatload of time. And I don't say that lightly. I think this is a tool that anybody can use and because it's saving you time, it's saving you headaches, it's saving you energy. And at least what's important to your business, it's going to save you guys some money as well. So with that, let's get started. So really quickly, who am I? Uh, that is me. And I've been a driver user since 2016. So I was a, so I just finished up my sophomore year of college. So I, I'm, I'm pretty young uh, in the engineering circle, at least. I am a certified driver's professional. I did get that while I worked over in the United Kingdom at driver's. I did that my, uh, what would have been my first semester of my senior year of college. That was the fall of 2017. I loved every minute of it. Those guys over there, they're all fantastic. They were like my family. Um, spent three months there working on a lot of technical content, a lot of marketing based videos, trying to get some information in the hands of those that maybe you don't know drivers as well, or maybe you're starting out, maybe you're going on this journey, maybe you're just researching it and you wanted to understand, well, what can I do? How hard is this tool really to use? That's a lot of what I did. So part of my internship was I got my certified drivers professional. While I was there, I also got my certified SOLIDWORKS expert. I worked on that in, that for about three years to be able to get that. So uh, I'm very proud of that accomplishment. It's something that I absolutely love. And the final thing that I want to mention about myself is that I am the host of the Inflow podcast, InPod. I'm actually recording this webinar right now. I'm going to be posting that later this week on the podcast. So definitely check that out if you're curious about that. We talk about a lot of different stuff. I talk about everything we support at Inflow, which ends up being quite a bit. And it actually segments, it segues very well into this next slide, which is if you guys signed up for this webinar, that's me. Since you guys couldn't see that, sorry, I paused my screen so I didn't have you guys seeing my emails flash in front of me earlier. There you go. So um, that's me, driver user since 2016. I entered at driver's the fall of 2017, got my certified driver's professional, certified software expert, and I am the host of the Inflow podcast, InPod. So again, I will be posting this later this week. Uh, I think tomorrow or, or Thursday. Uh, so if you guys miss anything, if you guys just want to hear my, my soothing voice one more time, uh, feel free to check that out. And that segues really well into, you know, what do I talk about on the podcast? Well, I talk about a lot of different stuff and that's because computer aided technology is a really big company and we span a lot of different phases. So when you signed up for this webinar, you probably saw CATI. Well, then you see on that intro slide inflow technology. Well, who on earth is this inflow team? If you've never worked with us, let me explain. Like I said, CATI has a lot of different stuff from design with things like SOLIDWORKS CAD, SOLIDWORKS Electrical, DraftSite, even DriveWorks, to our technical communication software. So things like SOLIDWORKS Composer, to Simulia, SOLIDWORKS Simulation, FlowSim, even 3D printers, which is maybe an underappreciated part of the business because it is so cool. The fact that you can 3D print anything you want. I absolutely love that. But PDM and PLM is specifically where I focus, and that's where Inflow focuses. We have so much going on here. SolidWorks PDM, SolidWorks Manage, the 3D Experience Platform, Inovia, uh, XLead, and DriveWorks. That's all stuff that we work on here at Inflow Technology. So if you if there's any confusion, like who's this Inflow that Nick's talking about, that's who Inflow is. That's where I work. Uh, but we're all still the same company. We're just still like a sister company. We're like a branch, the consulting arm. That's what we focus on. And what we're going to talk about today is DriveWorks Solo. And I wanted to start this off with, here's this slide. This is a, a very typical DriveWorks slide. And there's a question on there. Are your designs the same, but different? And I think every engineer I've ever talked to looks at that and goes, 
of course they're different. Every design that we do is different. There's not like, yeah, we, we build the same things, but they're not close to the same thing. So let me explain really what that means. If you think about a bookcase, you know, it's the same design concept every time. It's going to be in general, like a box ish type shape. There's going to be some shelves of different spacings, uh, some kind of material that it's made out of, whether it's plastic, metal, wood, what kind of wood, what kind of metal, what kind of plastic, as well as the overall dimensions. You know, those are all things we're going to control in the final outcome though, it's a bookcase. And you're probably thinking, okay, Nick, that's a bookcase though. Anybody can make a bookcase. If, if you use solders for any amount of time, you can probably model up that stuff pretty quickly. Let's not get carried away here. So let's think of a more complex example. And I'll preface this, the Mustang configurator on Ford.com is not using drivers, at least not that I can tell. It, it's possible that it is, but not that I have ever found out. But if we think about the core here, what are we creating? Well, we're creating a car. And realistically, am I creating CAD models using this tool? No, probably not. But what I am doing is I'm selecting from a list of predefined options. So do I want an automatic or do I want a stitch shift? I chose stitch shift. I grew up with a stitch shift car. It was my first car. Of course, I want a stitch shift. For the exterior, you know, do I want a convertible or do I want it to be fully covered? Well, I mean, summers are pretty nice. I'll take the convertible. What kind of engine do I want? It's all different options that go into things like a bill of material. It's different configurable options. The heart of DriveWorks is you have a configurable item that you want to be able to change on the fly in some way, shape, or form. You may not be as complex as a Ford Mustang. You might not be as simple as a bookcase, but somewhere in between that, somewhere on that spectrum is likely where you fall. So let's talk about what we can do with DriveWorks. And, and we can start off by talking about licensing. And we'll start off with DriveWorks Express. Last week, Derek Lawson, like I said, he presented on DriveWorks Express, did an excellent job on it. Um, he, he shared his presentation with me beforehand. I didn't get the chance to attend it, but knowing Derek, I know what he was presenting on. It was fantastic. DriveWorks Express is a great tool to get started with because it's a free tool. It's built inside of your current SolidWorks. So if you go into Tools, Express Products, DriveWorks Express, you can get started automating today, like in the next 10 minutes. You should wait until after the webinar is over, but in the next 10 minutes, you could actually start automating something if you wanted to. From there, you might decide, you know what, Express is pretty cool, but I want to expand my capabilities. I want to do more than just create a solder drawing and an assembly. I want to create multiple drawings. I want a quote. I want to build material. I want some extra deliverables that, you know, it's not my SOLIDWORKS documents. It's related to SOLIDWORKS but they're not SOLIDWORKS documents. So then I might start looking at Solo. And then, you know, a couple months down the road, a year down the road, I'm happy, I'm having a great time with this because it saved me a ton of time. And my coworker looks over my shoulder and keeps saying, hey, you know, it'd be really cool if I could start using that because, you know, it'd be really helpful for me to get my job done faster. And then the sales team catches a point of what you're doing and they say, well, what if I got to do this in front of a customer like on my phone, wouldn't that be kind of cool? And then you can start saying, okay, well, maybe we look at DriveWorks Professional at that point in time, because DriveWorks Professional can let you configure your product from anywhere at any time. So stepping through, DriveWorks Express, entry-level design automation in every single seat of SOLIDWORKS. DriveWorks Solo is gonna be a little bit more complex. You're gonna get a little bit more out of it. You'll get some free online training, some how-to video clips, uh, Design automation, that's the core of any DriveWorks tool. Like I said, that's what we're doing in DriveWorks. We're picking configurable options. We'll also get to start working with those external templates. Express does a great job with SOLIDWORKS models, not so much beyond that. Solo, we can get a quote, a bill of material, a cover letter, things that, you know, it's gonna support our process. And some sample projects, which can help you get started, help you understand what's going on, because you can download Solo free for 30 days. If you want to, after this webinar, say, you know what, that's pretty cool. I think I can start using that right now. You can get started on Drive It Solo today. And finally, professional, like I said, that is any place, anywhere, any device. It's also going to be integrated with any system you want. Solo and Express, they do a great job with your SOLIDWORKS models, but if you need to pull a number from an ERP system, Solo is not going to be able to do that. Professional will. If you need to save your documents into your SOLIDWORKS PDM and automatically check them in with a comment, so that they can go through your workflows. Well, PDM Professional is gonna have to integrate with Drivers Professional, but it's not going to integrate with Drivers Solo. So 
path for growth. But the coolest part about all of these things, if you start with Drive to Express and decide, I like it, I want to go to Drive It Solo. Everything you have in Express, you can put that in the Drive It Solo. Everything you then create in Drive It Solo, you can then put that in Drive It Professional. You don't have to start over as you go through each one. You can start at the lowest level and advance all the way through your driver's journey. But a closer look at driver solo, I want to make sure that this is clear for everybody to know. There is this free train and it's fantastic and it will walk you through at the end of it. You'll have a really good idea. Here's how I make a form. Here's how I work with my models. Here's how I create my drawings. Here's how I change the scales of my drawings. You can get a lot done in 30 days at the end of that 30 days. You know, that's when you might call up inflow. You might call up your sales rep and say, Hey, get the SNCC guy on the phone. I want to talk with him about what I've discovered so far, what questions that I have. And we can talk then and say, you know, where do we go from this 30 days? Do we advance into drives professional? Do we get a full license of driver solo? You know, which one makes the most sense for you? That's really what we're trying to do. And it's easy to download. I don't know if you guys caught it, but on the bottom of that little screen that I had up a second ago, it did say you can buy this from your reseller or you can buy Drive It Solo online. You can go right into the Drive It's portal, driveworks.co.uk, and get started on this trial anytime you want. I do recommend calling up someone and saying, hey, this is what we're trying to do. Can I get what I want out of Drive It Solo? Because the worst thing would be if you've got this amazing lofty goal and Solo can only do like 5% of it. And you say, well, really, I need to prove out X, Y, and Z. Well, Solo can't prove that part of it out. So then we'd have to want to, we would want to talk about drives professional, what can we really do with it? But you can get a lot done in 30 days. I've had customers talk to me after that trial and go, I'm hooked. This has been fantastic. Uh, my boss came over and, and he, he sat next to me while we were working on some stuff. And, and he thinks it's a fantastic idea because we got all this stuff done in 30 days. We really proved out it's an excellent tool. So I definitely recommend give it a shot, go online, go download it. So now I want to show you a little bit of driver solo in action. And to do this, I could talk a little bit about what's on the screen, but nobody wants to just stare at a screen. So let me go ahead and pull up a configurator. Sorry, like I said, uh, Mustangs are configurators. Uh, this is essentially just picking from a list of options, paint type, tape stripe, the roof color, racing stripe, the different packages. It's a pretty cool thing, but this isn't driver solo. So let me actually pull up driver solo for you. This is essentially a drive it solo project. This right here is a cabinet. And if we got rid of the doors, it's kind of just a bookcase. We can see this is a SolidWorks model. So one of the cool parts about DriveWorks is that this is a certified gold partner with SolidWorks. So what you have in SolidWorks today is applicable to DriveWorks. You might want to change a couple things. You might want to change your modeling practices, your modeling intent, but your SolidWorks models are going to be your starting point. You don't have to create some special drive words file. It's still an SLD PRT, SLD ASM. On the right hand side, we can actually see a drive words form. So what does this look like as we progress through? Well, we start off with asking some basic questions. So we want to know for anybody that's going through here, anybody that's creating a new model, you know, what is your quote number? We want to know what your name is. We'd like to know what your address is. Now, you don't have to be terribly complex. You can be very simple. You can have a lot of information here. So I'm just going to say my address is, the, is my work address. And who's my salesperson? Well, I've been on a Harry Potter kick recently, so Harry Potter is going to be my sales guy. And funny enough, he's actually in the United States today. So we're using the US dollar, but we might want to be able to select what kind of currency do we want. Again, it's just options that we can choose from. So when we hit next, okay, well, what questions are going to be relevant to creating your model? What questions would you as an engineer ask your salesperson to get from the customer? The customer says, I want this. Okay, well, I need to know A, B, C, D, E, and F. Well, what are those? So for creating a cupboard, for creating a bookcase, we need to know, well, how tall is it going to be? And DriveWorks even helps us out a little bit. We can say specifically, here's your minimum height and here's your maximum height. So what that means is, if I'm going to try to be smart and say, you know what, my maximum is one and a half meters tall. I think I want this to be two meters. So we're going to do 2000 millimeters. As soon as I type that and hit enter, uh, well, drive, it's corrected it down. So I can't go beyond. 
I set my limits, those are my limits. There's no way for me to, to skip that. So we're gonna go 500 and I'm gonna do kind of similar stuff as I go through here. So what kind of depth do I want? I want 387. Just showing you these guys don't have to be uh, straightforward. The door style, you know, do you want to be glass, shaker, flat? As I switch, you know, what is an idea of what this will look like? Okay, so I can see quick previews using DriveWorks just based off of my forms, which I'll show you guys some of the back end and how we're doing this in a minute. We hit next, and now Drive's gonna keep asking us more questions. So now we've got the basics out of the way. What kind of material do you want next? Well, in this case, we're creating our bookcase, our cupboard out of wood. And I have these five options right here, maple, oak, pine, beech, and mahogany. If I wanted to add more to that, I could. If I wanted to get rid of something, maybe we're out of stock, I can go ahead and take this out of the list if I want to. In this case, I want an oak one because I, I think it'll look really nice. And what kind of handles do I want? I want those little the handles, the true ones you can put your fingers there and, and pull. All the while I've been doing this, I can see my cost is updating at the bottom. Now we started off at around 110 bucks. Now we're down to 107. So each option that we choose is going to influence this number in some way. So we can see a pricing breakdown. How is it being calculated? Okay, that's pretty cool, but I'd like to really see what this model is going to look like. I, this is cool and all, but I need it to do my SOLIDWORKS for me. Well, up at the very top of Drive It Solo, there's a button and it, it's a blue cube. And when you click on it, it will preview your models for you. So here's what's really cool. Everything that you as an engineer have to think about, every calculation, which I'll show you how many we're doing here, and spoiler alert, it's not a handful. We have to determine the doors. We have to decide how big are these doors. We have to determine what's the material of these doors. We have to determine the sides. How tall are the sides? How deep are the sides? What is the top? How many shelves are we having? There are all of these calculations, all of these questions that you rightly as an engineer need the answers to, to properly create this model. Well, what we've done is we've gone behind the scenes in DriveWorks and said, based off of user selections, do the following logic statements, execute those statements, execute the following equations. You know, if we have a buffer, so the customer asks for a 400 millimeter uh, tall bookcase, well, how tall does that make the doors? Well, it's gonna be 400 minus the distance from the floor and then whatever clearance we have on the top. That's all stuff that you can, you can verbalize that. You do, that, you do that in maybe an Excel sheet right now. Well, that Excel sheet or whatever you're using to write on, that is in fact your configurator. You can imagine it the same way. Just with DriveWorks, we're gonna automate that process and make it so that DriveWorks can pop this up right in front of us and we're good to go. So that was, oh, about a minute and a half, two minutes. And we have a bookcase. And if I want to, I can say, okay, uh, I, I kind of want to see through this. Well, this is a SolidWorks model. That's what DriveWorks creates. It creates SolidWorks models for us. So we can now go inside of this model we can take it apart. Maybe we're in the prototyping phase. Maybe we're still really early on in, in our driver's journey. So we need to do some debugging. We need to see how are the mates holding up? Is everything going the way that we expect it to? Take some measurements, run some clearance testing, anything we need to because driver's creates SOLIDWORKS models for you. So that's one of my favorite things about drivers. It's, it's a really cool thing to show. I'll show you exactly how much time we're saving in a minute, but this just to wet your palate, is what DriveWorks does uh, at a high level. So that was DriveWorks Solo in action. That, that was running it. So what did we really do? Well, we start off by filling out the forms. So we start off by filling in the information that we need from a sales perspective. Then we start filling in the engineering specs. How big do you want this bookcase to be? What kind of materials do you want? As well as the pricing breakdown. So we wanna see that at the very end. We can see on my screen now, if you're listening to the podcast, you can't quite see this, but mahogany is gonna be way more expensive than oak and it's gonna be way more expensive than pine. Well, obviously, of course it is. So we've programmed that knowledge into DriveWorks so that DriveWorks understands if we choose mahogany, there's a mark up there because it's a more expensive wood. And what I didn't get to, but at the very end of that set of forms is you can look at different features because DriveWorks can create a lot more than just a SOLIDWORKS model. Of course, the results, you first want your models because 
driver it's at the heart at its heart is an engineering tool it's something that you can use to help you create your solid models quicker you don't have to we actually do have customers out there that that, that use driverts and they don't use solid at all in fact some of them don't even have solid they use it purely as like a, a front-end cpq cpq uh, solution drivers can do that as well but for most people especially in driver solo you're going to be using it and you're going to create your solid models so we'll create our doors we'll create any hardware we need we'll create any drawings as well. Now these drawings can vary in complexity. Sometimes we'll have a very simple ISO drawing, just uh, just our simple three view, and then maybe a little material. It's quick enough. All we really have to do is update our views. Okay, but we might want to restale stuff because you know we had some pretty wide ranges there for that bookcase. It could go anywhere from four hundred millimeters up to uh, fifteen hundred. Well, that's a pretty wide range. How's it going to fit on our sheets? You know, if we choose an A sheet. Is it going to be too big or too small? Well, we can use drivers to actually restale things and reposition them if we need to. And what's really cool about a tool like Driver Solo is if you think about who's going to be receiving these drawings, well, you might have one that goes to engineering. Okay, they're probably going to have uh, solders installed. You'll probably send one to manufacturing. and they likely have e-drawings or something they can open a solder drawing. What if you take this drawing, though, and send it to a customer? How many customers, in this example here especially, are going to have SOLIDWORKS to open up an SLD DRW? Probably not all that many. But everybody has a web browser. And especially, what if I'm going to be opening this on my phone? Well, then I definitely have a web browser of some sort. So I can send them a PDF. I can have drivers automatically save a PDF version of that so that I don't have to go through manually and do it. I don't have to remember to make those extra three or four clicks. Instead, Driverts creates the, the SolidWorks drawing, and then it exports it out as a PDF afterwards so that I can take that and ship it off as well in an email later on. Where Solo starts to differentiate itself from Driverts Express is in the creation of documents. So like I said, we might be creating a cover letter. Now, cover letters, typically they're pretty form letters anyway. So we've got things like, what is the quote number? Who's the salesperson? Uh, what is the received by date? You know, simple stuff. We can calculate that, you know, just add three weeks to the order date and that's the expected ship date. Simple stuff that we can do. In engineering, the bill of materials is probably the most common document that I hear people say, I need that. Well, drivers are going to create those bill of materials for us as well. So we don't have to automatically create this. We don't have to go into SOLIDWORKS and ship that out. We can actually tell DriveWorks, create this bill of materials and save that as a separate document. That way we can take it and send it to manufacturing or send it to purchasing if we have to purchase this stuff. And sales loves their quotes. So inside of sales, we're going to need to know, okay, what is the unit price? Are we going to apply a discount? What's the overall line total? If we do apply a discount, what's the address that this is going to? Sales needs all of that. Well, DriveWorks can be a sales tool as well. So in this case, we can say the mahogany cupboard. Well, here's our dimensions, here's our price. Here's our glass door, here's our price. And we can just attach this to an email. Sales doesn't have to go through and maybe they accidentally typed the wrong numbers. So then the customer is expecting something from engineering and there's that disconnect. Well, if we use DriveWords to create all of our documentation for us, we're not worried about that because DriveWords is going to consistently say, here's what I told SolidWorks, so here's what I'm gonna tell this quote document. And if you haven't got the idea yet, Driver Solo is a very customizable tool. Here's just three other examples of what we can do. So we can create a pipe flange system. And this is these are all sample projects on Driver. You can find these uh, in the Driver Solo sample projects that I referenced earlier. We can say, you know, what, what kind of pipe fittings do I need? You can do something like that. You can do a medical supplies cart, something that you'll see at a hospital. You know, that's something that's pretty straightforward. It's basically a bookcase, but it's on wheels, okay? Well, we kind of already know what we're going to do with that, so you can get a feel for what that would look like. Or you can even have something that does like an agricultural trailer. And that's going to sound a lot more complex because there's a lot more logic that we have to think about. But what's cool is that those forms, they do whatever you want. They capture the information that you need to capture. If you don't need a customer to tell you his backstory on why he needs this product so that you can create an engineering, you don't have to ask for it. You can just ask for what dimensions do you have? What options do you care about? 
one really nice thing that Drivit Solo does is that it starts to introduce the option of using tables. I'll pull up what the tables look like in a moment, but you can actually get an idea on this screenshot here. In Drivit Solo, these tables are tabular data. That's roughly all that it is for us. So if you're familiar with Microsoft Excel, you know, you can actually use Excel to do lookups and calculate values based off of other cells. Drive it solo isn't going to have quite that level of complexity built into the tables, but you can use it to store this information so that you can do lookups, you can do lists, you can do sorting off of that information, do calculations based off of it later, uh, maybe not in the table itself, but you can use the values in the table to help you with your engineering decisions later. But what's cool is that we don't have to keep going back and forth to Excel. Like I said earlier, Excel could basically be your configurator, but we can take that Excel based logic and pull that into Drive it solo so that we don't have to go back and forth. Instead, Drivers has all of that pre-programmed into it. And like I showed, with Driveworks, you can get a feel for exactly what you're gonna be getting right off the bat. I'm sure we've all heard this story. A customer comes to you and says, you know, I really like your product. I wanna get a preview of it. I wanna know exactly what it's gonna look like before I'm willing to buy. I'm not quite willing to put down the money for it. Uh, we need to get a preview. Well, if you think about it from an engineering perspective, that doesn't help you. You still have to worry about all that information. You still have to do all the engineering work and there's not even a promise of a PO at the end. But with DriveWorks, we can say, okay, like I showed you, in two minutes, I was able to generate a preview of the split case. What am I out for two minutes? Okay, I'll go get a cup of coffee while I run it. Easy enough, I was gonna go get the coffee anyway. So now I was able to kind of do two things at once. My boss is gonna be happy and the customer is gonna be happy. Now, what I didn't show you in that preview was that we can also create all of our drawings. These drawings, I, I talked about this a little bit ago, but we can preview these drawings as well. So we can make sure that everything's going to fit properly. You know, what is the length of this trailer? What is the overall length of this trailer? What is the height? What is the overall height? All of these different dimensions that we care about, well, it's important that we can get this stuff quickly and easily. So we'll, what we're gonna be able to do with Driverts is get a preview for it, download that stuff really fast. Uh, we'll do a whole run of the project here in a minute, and I'll show you exactly how much time we're saving. And finally, with DriveWorks, you create your files and you get them where you want them and when you want them. So what's really cool about DriveWorks Solo and DriveWorks Professional is that you can take these models and sort them into different files or different folders inside of your folder structure. If you think about it, do you really want to put all of your SolidWorks drawings with your Excel sheets and with your SolidWorks uh, assemblies and with your pictures and all that in one folder? You might, but I probably wouldn't. You know, I might want to organize it by customer and then by order. And then within that subdivide to say, here are my SolidWorks files and here's my documentation that gets sent to the customer. And then here's miscellaneous information. Well, I can do that inside of DriveWorks. I can segment it out because everything that we create, we tell DriveWorks, where do I want to put this? And then it understands and it will put it there. And if that folder doesn't already exist, DriveWorks team can create those folders for you automatically on the fly. I'm going to jump back into the live demonstration now and kind of talk about what I've been hinting at all along. Let me go ahead and look at my SOLIDWORKS. Give it just one moment. Okay, so this is kind of the the nuts and bolts of drivers. This is what you would see before you run an overall project. We're going to see information about our models. What models are we going to be controlling? So we can see the overall covered assembly. We can see there's a drawing associated with that. We can see the shelving, the rack, the post, everything that we're that we really need to control inside of drivers. Well, it's all going to be captured right here. When we talk about capturing, capturing is just telling drivers, I want to control this in some way, shape or form. It might be as simple as I change the configuration, I change the material, heck, I change the color. It could be that I change everything about this model. Uh, maybe we add a cut, maybe we pattern that cut out. That's all stuff that we might want to have inside of DriveWorks 
So we still have to capture that model. Even if it's a more complex change, it's the same process overall. When you capture it, we just start writing rules. And that was a little far, that, that skipped ahead, so spoiler alert. Inside of drivers, those forms, I talked about customization. Well, what does customizing them really look like? Well, we might be starting off on the appearance slide. And if we think about it, okay, what materials do we have? Well, it's these five, and it's pulling from a list of options. We can see that because, well, here's this list. We have programmed it into drivers. If I want to change this list, well, I can do that just by going in here and I can say, uh, I don't think you would want to create a cabinet out of balsa wood, but you never know. Some people are crazy. If we want to update this list, just type it in, hit okay. And now if I come back into drive words and I click on test, well, when I go ahead and click on this drop down, ooh, look, now we have a new option to, to pick from. But, you know, a, a list is cool, but what other things could I do with this? Well, beyond just a simple list, I do have some options up at the top, depending on what we're doing. So if we come up to the top, notice there are these 11 different buttons that we can pick from. There's a checkbox. So think about when you would use a checkbox. Yes, no, do I want this? Turn it on, turn it off. It's the whole point of a checkbox. A combo box, that's what we were just looking at. It's a drop down. you pick one from a list. Not to be confused with the list box, which is just to the right of it. A list box is gonna have all of them showing at the same time. So then I pick one and it highlights my overall selection. Numerous others in here, things like picture boxes, which is what we're using here to make it look nice and fancy. So we can get a preview of, okay, this is pine. This is what those handles look like. We want to be able to understand exactly what we're looking at, exactly what's going on. So by using picture boxes, we can give a kind of a preview, not quite the 3D preview, but I can get a preview for what exactly this is going to look like. Using these controls up here, we can customize all of our different forms. And then by going into the form navigation, we can customize our customer journey. So we create each of those forms. So that was the overall design form. So then from there, we would go to the appearance and then to the price and to the file naming. We could also have questions in there. So did our user select something? Yes or no. Based off of that, we can use decisions to kind of guide them down different paths. For example, in a lot of the demonstrations that I'll do, I'll talk about a semi truck trailer and I'll ask the question, is it a flatbed trailer or is it a covered trailer? Well, if it's a covered trailer, there's going to be doors in there. But if I choose a flatbed trailer, there aren't going to be doors. So if we think about it from a user perspective, how much sense does it make for me to select a flatbed trailer? And then for the next question I get asked to be, what kind of doors do you want? How tall do you want this trailer to be? It makes no sense. If I'm a user, I'm going to be confused. I'm going to be frustrated. I'll roll my eyes and I'll click through it. But you know, what if you lose one person because they go, these guys don't even know what I'm asking for and they close out of it. Well, you lost a sale. You lost some, something you could really do if we just add this quick decision in it. So where's this information stored? Well, I talked about our tables a moment ago. Let's actually look at that. Specifically, let's look at the pricing of everything. Well, like I said, based off of what we choose, it's going to be one thing versus if we choose something else, it'll be different. So pine is going to be one. So the multiplier on that, whatever we determine the cost to be, it's going to be exactly the same. Versus mahogany, like I said, it's more expensive. According to this driver's project, it's three times more expensive than pine. So we can use that multiplier. We can look it up and say, if our user selects mahogany, look up in this table and find the price multiplier, which we can then use in our variables. Now these look like a lot of variables. So let me go ahead and simplify it a bit. Here's our price. We'll start there. Where does this price come from? Well, it's going to be looking at a couple of different options here. Now, if you looked really quickly, you might've noticed in that folder I just minimized, there were a whole bunch of, you know, quote one, quote two, quote three, and then there were a couple other uh, items that went along with it. Well, all this total price is doing is it's adding up those different variables. So as we calculate stuff out, we're gonna round it up or down, whichever way we need to, and then we're gonna format that text. So we want it to be in the form of essentially a, a price. So uh, 
number, decimal point, and then cents, do dollars, cents. Or if you're in Great Britain, uh, pounds sterling, it's going to be pounds and pence, that kind of stuff. But we're going to format that information for us so we don't have to worry about it. And here's our list of variables. And actually, this gives me a good chance to say variable quote item one quantity. Well, if we look here, quote item quantity one, and then we can see the description and the part number, everything is included right here for us. So I'm not worried about, you know, where's this information coming from? Drivers are storing all of this for us. It's going to calculate it. It's going to update it as we go. So all we're doing is we're just summing up however many we've got. So everything is stored in three different variables. So we pull from those three. And at this point, if you're feeling like, okay, this is a lot of stuff that we have to worry about. Well, this is a lot of stuff that you have to think about every time you create a model as well. To really show you what we're doing here and why I think Drivers is such a cool tool and why I think anybody can really benefit from this, whether you're doing a simple project or something that takes an incredibly long amount of time. Um, here you go for our cupboard assembly. I showed you earlier, this is what our model tree looked like. I showed you over here on the right-hand side of SolidWorks. And I said, we want to tell it how we're, how we're controlling it. You know, are we controlling it very simply? Change the color, change the material. Are you going to be changing some dimensions, some patterns, some features? Well, here we actually have that driver's project, and here's what we're doing. So we control the name of the file. Like I also mentioned, we control where the file gets saved at the end. So we can use simple if statements. If you look at the rule, it's just if this is true, then do X, otherwise do Y. That's all you really think about it doing. It's simple at cell-based logic. Anything you can write into a Microsoft Excel cell right now, you can write that into a DriveWorks rule. And we start thinking about things like the height and the width and the depth, you know, all those things that we're going to think about as an engineer. And, you know, we might start thinking of some complex rules here. So if you look at the top shelf from the top, so what is that distance that we have to think about? Well, now we're going to have to do some rounding. So, you know, how many shelves are we saying? Okay, well, if it's two, then we want to round that height off based off of a couple other values. Otherwise, we want to round it based off of this other value set. Things that we have to think about in engineering, things that we're asking ourselves. Maybe we plug it into Microsoft Excel table. We say, and we say, okay, we've chosen two, and here's the height. And then it spits out this 255. But well, we're letting drivers do that. The way I look at this, and I say, okay, some of these rules are very simple. Height, width, depth. That would take me maybe 10 seconds to do, if that. And that's just if I have trouble finding what I'm looking for. These bigger ones, it's going to take me a, maybe a couple of minutes. If we average this out, we say, okay, a minute, maybe two minutes per rule. So we'll go with one. This is 25 rules, but this isn't everything. Notice down here on the bottom left, 25 rules displayed 400 in total. If we take one minute per rule and we have to change all 400 of these, let's say that nothing is standard here and this customer has asked for something that we've never made it before. 400 rules times one minute each is six, hundred, is six hours and 40 minutes of effort. That's a lot. That's a lot of calculations that we have to do really quickly in order to get our effort, in order to get our job done. It's a lot of effort. So what is DriveWorks doing to make this easier for us? Well, like I showed you earlier, we can calculate and create our models in about two minutes. But models are only half of the battle here. We also need to create our drawings and we need to create any additional documentation that goes above and beyond our solvents models. We need to create things like our drawing. We need, sorry, I already mentioned our drawings. We need to create that cover letter, that bill of material, that quote document. So when I come back into SOLIDWORKS, do you want to create one? Well, yes, I do. And we're going to run through, we're going to do a whole run of a driver's project. And then who's my salesperson? Aaron, since you're hosting this for me, we're going to put Mr. Aaron Winters in this project. How big do I want this? You know, this is a pretty good size, but let's go 500. I don't need it to be that tall. I live in an apartment. I don't have that much space. So really this should be like 900 at the most. And I don't need to be that deep. It's gonna hold 
you know, a couple of things for me. And flat, okay, we're under 100 bucks now. I'm happy. I like that. Uh, do I need a pine? I can go with pine. I don't need mahogany. You no know, mahogany would be nice. And what kind of handles do I want? I still like those those handles that are kind of like hooks, kind of like loops. You can see that pricing breakdown. So like I showed you earlier for the total price, this is one, two, and three. It's adding all three of those things up, and that's the total price variable that I showed you earlier. So you can start to see how Drivers is pulling this stuff together. Where is it finding this information? What's well, finding it from the Drivers project? How do we want to name our files? Well, if I'm a customer, I'm not caring too much, but if I want to reuse these models later, maybe I click on intelligent file naming so that next time a customer orders something that's this exact size, drivers can go back in and say, hey, we've already made something like this before, pull it, and then use it again later. So we can choose to read up some more information. So we can say file naming methods, you know, why is it doing it this way? Well, either it can use a unique ID or it can say to be very specific. For documents, different things, but you know, we don't have to get into that. So when we hit finish, Drivers is going to ask us, okay, what do you want to do? Well, I want to save these models with the final file names. So those intelligent file names, I want them. I need my drawings as well, as well as any documentation. You know, we're going to send this to a customer. We're done. And yeah, I'd, I'd like to see it when it's done. So when you hit finish, you have to think about what is Drivers going to do now? Well, it's going to start off with what I just showed you a little bit ago. Drivers is going to take your SolidWorks model, it's going to make a copy of that file, and then it's going to start running through those changes. And if you recall, we're looking at 400 variables, 400 different options that we have to control. Now, some of them might not change. We might even delete some of those options, but Drivers is going to determine that for us. So if we chose a flat door, as we did here, well, do I need shaker doors as an option? Mm, no, we can probably get rid of those shaker doors. Do I need glass doors? Again, probably not. What kind of handles did I select? Delete the ones that I don't need. All of these different things that you in engineering, you're, all, you're already doing this. You're already thinking about it. You just have to tell drivers to think the exact same stuff. So if you watch and you've got a keen eye on the bottom right, you can see selecting a component, driving a dimension, and then successfully drove component and then closed it. Essentially, that's what it's doing. It's just constantly, it's banging through each of these components, each part, each assembly. Eventually, it's going to start doing the same thing with drawings as well as the build materials. Finishes up, saving the models with the final file names. It rebuilds them to make sure that we're not going to have any errors. So that's nice. Nobody likes to open up a model and have the first thing solver says be, would you like to rebuild your model? No, I'd like to not have to do that, please. So Drivers is going to let us actually do that. We can actually tell Solberts, no, don't rebuild. We're done. Spin for another second. And let's see, opening up a couple of things. <laughs> There we go. So now it has successfully started saving those models. And that is the cupboard assembly that I have requested. That's the final thing. Great. Let's create more. Let's start creating our drawings. So we'll go through and notice it kind of overlaps a bit on the title block. So we're going to make sure that the scale is going to fit. We're going to make sure that the numbering, that those bubbles uh, that we have going around it, we want to make sure that that's going to fit. There we go. So now everything's kind of repositioned. Everything fits on the drawing the way that I expected to. That's pretty cool. I'm happy with it. So let's move on to the next drawing as well. If you're an avid user of SolidWorks PDM, and even if you're not a user of PDM, you might be familiar with SolidWorks custom properties. Now, what do custom properties do for you? Obviously, it depends on whatever you're working on. In the case of something like SolidWorks PDM, we might take those custom properties and put them into our data cards so that we can start searching on that. If you're like a lot of people, they'll use those custom properties and drive them into the title blocks of a SolidWorks drawing. Well, what I didn't show you, but is happening behind the scenes, is Drivers is going through each of these models and it's updating the custom properties as well. So anything that you need to determine, anything that you need to store in your models, you need the description, you need the order number, you need the material, you need the finish. 
the name of the customer that's ordering it. All of that information is stuff that you care about. It's stuff that, yeah, you'll ordinarily plug it into your models. It's not a big deal to do it, uh, but it is something that you have to do. So we can make drivers do that for us. Finished up that first drawing, and now let's need to do a couple more. So we have the overall assembly drawing. That's where Drivers Express is going to really say, okay, there's your drawing. With Drivers Solo, well, here you go. Let's create one for each of these shelves. You know, we need to understand the size of them. So what is the spacing of the slots? What is the overall size of the shelf? For each of the legs that we've got, you know, how tall are these legs? Where are these holes going so that we can actually put in the, the screws so we can attach all this, make sure it's good. And we can use broken views. So 414 millimeters, it's a pretty good size piece. So we might use a broken view to make sure that it all fits, but Drivers is still able to generate those views for us. Same thing here, this one's even bigger, 864 millimeters. We have a broken view so that it, it doesn't look 864, but it still has that dimension there for us. It's easier for me to print it. It's easy enough for my engineers to read it. They understand what they're looking at. It's perfect. And this is pretty cool. This is one of my, this is my favorite part about watching DriveWorks is you get to see it do the work for you. You get to see it do the clicks that ordinarily you would have to do as a user, dragging those bubbles to make sure that it all fits, changing the scale from uh, maybe five to one to four to one, or one to five, depending on what you're looking at, of course. Updating our tables. We have to make sure that everything's viewing the proper file, make sure that everything is up to date because we don't want it referencing an old file. We want it to actually have what we need. And we should be nearing the end now. I think this is either the last or the second to last piece. But in total, this has been running for four and a half, five minutes. If you recall, like I said, 400 rules is what you would have to determine. Now, some of them might be quick, but again, 400 rules on average, let's say a minute per rule, we're looking at six hours and 40 minutes to generate this. We already have the model. Now we're generating our drawings. We're going on five minutes. We're not even to 10 yet. Some people might say, well, I can just generate over a lunch break. You can generate a few of these over your lunch break. And that's that. That is an entire driver's project run all the way through. And, you know, it took a few minutes. I won't lie. It took, uh, according to this, the first report was run at uh, 246. The final one was run at 250. So four minutes to run the whole thing. It's not bad. If we click into the documents, okay, here's all these different options that we have. So I sh I've shown you guys what we can look at for our drawings. You can see that popping up in front of you. But things like quote document, saved as an HTML. HTML can be opened by any web browser. We're not worried about that. It's perfect. So we can actually double click on this quote. And I showed you earlier my quote from Alba Stumbledore, but let's see how that compares to my quote from Mr. Aaron Winters. We can see the dispatch date. Okay, we're looking at about two, a little over two weeks from now. And pine cupboard, 500 millimeter high, 900 wide, 300 deep. This is exactly what I'm ordering. If I apply to discount, you know, maybe I'm a salesperson, I have the right to give a discount. I could actually apply that here and see it. I can take this and send this to anybody and they can view it on any device as long as it has a web browser. It's pretty cool. That's what the documentation aspect about drivers is all about. It saves you time beyond just your solder models. Your solder models are cool and they're really important, but what do sales need to get their job done? What departments need to be involved in this? The more documentation we can create automatically, the easier it is for everybody involved. So jump back into the PowerPoint again. So different documents that we can create. But by linking these values to forms created in DriveWords, we're driving that information quickly, gets us quicker, gets us back to our customers faster. They don't want to wait for hours and hours creating quotes. I work on the pre-sales team. So customers at the end of every call, okay, when can you get us a quote? It's hard to get a quote within five minutes. But if I'm using DriveWords, well, right there, I put in my order, I had a quote in five minutes. That's pretty cool. As a customer, I would be happy with a five-minute response time.
So what kind of resources are out there? You're, you've seen what Drivers what Drivers Express can do if you attended last week's webinar. You've now seen kind of what Drivers Solo can do. What can I do to get started? I I like the tool. I think it's an, an impressive tool, and I think it can really help us all on the way. Well, there are training files and training videos. I said that I would talk a little bit about some of the things that I did at DriveWorks. Well, one of them was I actually did create some videos. So if you go onto the Drivers YouTube page, and you come across some videos that say Quick Tips. That was my video series. That's something that I worked on over at Drivers uh, when I was there in, in 2017. They're quick tutorials. I think every video was under two minutes and it shows you how to do some stuff within Drivers. It shows how do you edit a table? How do you uh, drive your custom properties to change the color? Simple stuff, but if you're just starting out, if you're curious, you know, how hard is this to really change? You know, I showed you some quick rules, but what does this look like for everything? You know, what, what examples are there? Tons of YouTube content out there. I think I made 20 plus videos. Beyond that though, if you say, that's cool, let's get started with it. Well, there's this tutorial. So the online training along with the files that you need to actually do that work, it's all included. Like I said, I created some quick tip videos, but there are a ton of just how-to video clips. There are thousands and thousands and thousands. I don't know the exact number of driver choosers, but there are, are thousands out there. Everybody out there wants to create some content. If you look up DriveWorks, how to capture, you'll find videos. If you look up DriveWorks, how to you how to create drawing, you can find information on that. Capture custom property. Tons of how-to video clips out there. And something that I think is vastly underrated, there are all these sample projects inside of DriveWorks. What makes this so cool is that you can get ideas. You can get inspiration for what other people are doing. I actually had a call with a customer just yesterday. And they said, you know, we'd really like to get a feel for how are other people using this because we're saving a bunch of time right now, but we want to know, we want, we want to be inspired. We're kind of like an artist, an artist needs its mute, needs his muse. In this case, anybody that's using drivers, they need their muse. So creating a, an agricultural trailer, a shutter door. So now what? That's probably your question. Now that we've been sitting here for about 50 minutes, I've shown you DriveWorks, I've shown you a run of it, shown you kind of what it looks like, and, and even some of the results. We're, we went from almost seven hours of work down to several minutes of work, maybe seven minutes total that I had to type in work. I'm pretty happy with that. I think it can save me a lot of time. How do you get started with DriveWorks? Well, you can go ahead and download the trial. If you go onto the DriveWorks website, driverts.co.uk, you can find DriveWorks Soul and get started right now. Um, I, I said earlier, you could do it within 10 minutes, you can get started. I think within 10 minutes, this webinar should be done and you should be able to jump online and start playing with it if you want to. Before you do that though, my, my biggest encouragement and something that I, I think makes sense to at least have the discussion, find a driver's expert out there, whether that means you call up Inflow, which, you know, call us up, talk to your sales rep, they'll get me on the phone and they'll get Aaron or they'll get someone else on our team. We'll talk about driver's with you. Find out what is it you're trying to do? Can Driver Solo be the perfect tool? What kind of resources are out there to help you along the way? Those are the kinds of questions we'll be able to answer. We'll be able to get you started, get you, we'll be able to gently push you in the right direction so that, you know, do you want to get started with the 30 day trial? Maybe it made sense to start with Express. Maybe what you really want to prove out is something that Driver's Professional is best suited for. So here's what you could do with Solo. And then we can talk about Pro after that if that's what you really need. But lots of different options. I would say download the trial, give Inflow a call, give us a call, get us on the phone, and we'll walk through that with you. We'll guide you on your journey because we want you to be successful. I love DriveWorks. If you can't tell, I spent the last hour talking about it. I could talk about it all day long. So if you want to talk about DriveWorks, if you want to understand what is this tool, how much time can I save, let's talk. Let's run through it. So with that, Thank you all for attending. I hope you uh, enjoyed the presentation. I hope that you guys got a lot out of it. I think Drivers is a fantastic tool. And here are some additional resources to guide you along the way. Um, I realize now that you guys can't click on these things, but Drivers Solo resources, again, that's the Drivers website. So drivers.co.uk, resources, Drivers Solo, right where it leads you. We've got some great Drivers content on the Inflow blog. There's obviously the free trial. And if you're curious, how much time can I save using Drivers? If you just look up Drivers ROI calculator, pops up first result on Google. I checked right before the presentation. It still is. 
you can actually find a calculator, plug in your values, and find out how much time you can save using DriveWorks. So that's all I've got. So thank you, everyone.